Being from the South United States myself, feeling very comfortable in these last two circles as they were very southern. <laughs> you can see that's going to be shoot to kill, getting caught up into that skirmish with Oath. It was very early in this game, and it just feels like we have to talk about the true villain of PUBG is the circle itself. And in these last two games, it sure as hell felt that way. Yeah, it was pretty brutal. FaZe Clan doing such an excellent job, though, getting whatever points they can, kind of recognizing that this circle just wasn't going their way, kept shifting further and further to the east. They pick up 11 kills in this game with some excellent edge play, incredible shooting, of course, as you would expect from this team, one of, if not the best in the world. I mean, sure, FaZe went out pretty early as far as position points go, but with that many kills, doesn't feel bad at all. They're in such a good position with that uh, beautiful grenade that's going to finish them out. And Monkey holding the line right now, trying to make the push back up, but again, it's that Omakin positioning, and it's just on top of that hill. There is nowhere. It's fish in a barrel at that point. Yeah, dude, Monkey, he had some incredible plays there. Oh, yeah. Result at the end, the whole team playing so, so well. That was a really fun game there on Miramar. and But now we're done with it, and now we're going over to Sandhawk, and I'm pretty excited about this. The team that I'm really interested to watch here is going to be Wildcard. They won two out of the yeah. three games in the NA qualifiers for GLL Season 4, and they are really good on this map. It all comes down to how much control you can have with those guys because they'll they're on the hunt. Like, they smell blood and they are like sharks just chasing after it. And so in a map like Sandhawk, great for them. Like, if they can get those sight lines and just make those pushes, they are so comfortable in those spots. Another team that I want to keep an eye out on right now is Exodus. We haven't really had a chance to really see them, and I know everybody's been talking about them, uh, but we really haven't had, like, a premier moment for them as of yet. Yeah, they've been really solid in their region so far this year. They've been playing extremely well in the qualifiers. Mm -hmm. Tons of confidence on this team. You talk to all of them. They feel like they have a chance every tournament they're going to go to. They feel like they are maybe the best team in NA right now. I shouldn't say maybe. They do feel like that. And they are looking to prove it here. So far, it hasn't been the greatest start, but only two games so far. I like the, the They will tell you, but at least it's not like super egotistical. They're like, okay, look at our win record. This is why we feel this way. And if you do look at what's been going on these past couple of weeks, numbers do stand with them. Great performance all around. Now, one thing that I will point out is also we haven't seen Team Liquid too much in these late game circles. Sure, FaZe went out early with 11 kills, but Team Liquid, they got a couple. But, I mean, usually it's Team Liquid's strategy to get into a more centralized point and then fight whenever it matters in the end game after securing those position points. This time around, they're having some rough early game rotations. Yeah, it just, the, the circle definitely hasn't been super favorable for them. They're going center early, as you would expect from them, but it tends to be some weird, wacky shifts, whether it be hard north or hard east, and they're just not able to kind of work in those situations as effectively as I'm sure they'd like to. Plane is out. We are just going north to mm, southeast-ish over the docks. So this one should be pretty fair. There's not many planes on Sandhawk that aren't. Yeah, like, it's Sandhawk. If the plane is up in the air, you can pretty much get wherever you want to go, even, no matter how hard the plane path comes into play. So one thing about Sandhawk that's very interesting is the commit to drop usually shows an idea on a hope for circle, specifically if you're a team like right now, where you see Meta going back over towards that Western Islands, playing in that Northern area, they're hoping right now for the circle to pop around that location because it makes so much more control for that position. But the team that I'm gonna point out right now, Wildcard is holding my favorite split on this map to start with. You get a little bit of a foothold everywhere, and depending on how the circle goes, you can net kills right along that river, right where all of those meet at. It is just so dangerous to make crossings there, and a lot of times we see teams being forced to do so. Well, this is a really fascinating position. What oh, the? We are just southern. I what have up. you done? What have I, you done, I'm Matt trying from? to uncast or curse the circles. I swear <laughs> to you, I am. But okay, back down to the south yet again, and if you're a Singularity fan, you're pretty happy with this. Okay, so I have never seen in any competitive PUBG that I have watched or casted the circle end up anywhere near the docks. I've never seen it go onto that peninsula. I always get cave. That's I, I, I think come. it's going to be near cave is what I'm, you know, just guessing based around this. Somewhere maybe around the south side of Quarry. This is actually why Quarry is one of the most valued spots right now in competitive PUBG because there is a lot of circles that kind of generate around that area, but we do have a video ready for you guys from Team Singularity. We try to be a, an aggressive team, but also a, a smart one. We have the 
surprise factor because most of the teams uh, have no idea of who we are or how we play and it could be a, a, a strength for us because we can give them the, the surprise. We just try to, to wipe those teams who are a, a threat for us because of their drops close to us or something like that. Singularity hits on a great point inside of that. Sure, you can study drop locations and everything else like that, but whenever you're kind of the mystery inside of this lobby, it's more about how do these teams play? Do you play aggressive? Are you not afraid to push anything? Do you tend to play more edge? It's Drops are one factor to it, but then once the rest of the game opens up, trying to figure out how these teams react, and if it's a learning process, does give you a certain bit of an advantage. Yeah, and, I, and they're getting a favorable circle here on game number three. I'm curious to see exactly how they play this out. Of course, Omikin, they were on the eastern side of Quarry. They're going to be coming down more into the circle, just kind of working your way through. you got to be careful on Sandhawk. You never know when somebody's going to be prone in the grass, just waiting to try to spring a trap on you. Team Wicklid, surprise, surprise, making their early move out of boot camp. Uh, once again, though, these circles, very, very brutal for them. Let's see how they adjust to this. Seems like the first two games wasn't quite you know, comfortable for them. Maybe they can find their groove here in game number three. Bay is getting a very good position for this first circle. Very centered up. They've got the river that's protecting them off to one side. The complex itself is pretty strong, all things considered. Oath is running that 2-2 two -two split right now. That's probably going to regroup back down into one, but it's going to be Navi all the way up towards the north. They're going to have to make a long rotation. And while I talked about wild card in the position that they had at the start, usually it's quite strong, unless you get a circle that goes uh, this far, the opposite direction, back down towards the south. Yeah, I, uh, we got kind of distracted in a roundabout way there. I wanted to talk about wild card as well. I like that drop position. And this is one of the positions when it was announced that Sandhawk was going to be used in competitive PUBG. And this is one of the positions that people really talked about as maybe being the most powerful one because almost anywhere that circle goes, you can get to it relatively easily. Here's the problem. we got WTSG that's rolling down right next to Wildcard, who is in rotation. TSG does stop for just a second to look back over towards this, but going to continue on with one vehicle. It's just going to leave two other members back protect this. This is not inside the safe zone yet, but it is pretty close to it. Vard takes a little bit of damage off of this, but now it's going to be long-range grenades going uphill to boot is going to be very difficult to hit on, but throwing them back down that hillside is a touch easier with it. So you can see that it's going to be Exodus getting into a skirmish as well as now it's Balefrost does get the shots back over towards Uncivil, but it's going to be a return shot coming up from Purdy Curdy. Three members up for Exodus right now as they're having to contend with shoot to kill. Very close range trying to get that flush back over towards Civ. Yep, good job by Pat Caps here coming up, wanting to get his teammate protected as best as he can. Knows where the other members of SDK are. He gets a great knock onto Luke. Purdy Curdy up there was the one who got the knock onto Bale Frost. Vegas very aware of this positioning, and now you've got the tornadoes swooping in. This is very bad for Shoot to Kill at this point. Trying to retreat away from it, but Team Liquid gets eyes back over towards Taylor J. Good shots come out from Team Liquid to get the down and near on instant flush with it. So more control starting to come back over for Team Liquid and buying a little bit more space from Purdy Curdy based off of that rotation. Last member up for Shoot to Kill. Wildcard still running back behind this. We saw them getting that little bit of a fight a second ago with WTSG, but they did separate out. And really, both of them are just trying to make their way towards the zone right now. So no continuation of a fight happening with them. Yeah, you're going to see, you can see uh, Pat Caps, for example, has a bolt action. This is this is a map where you're going to see a little bit more bolts than usual, just because on the close range of this map, you can get those shots, you can get those headshots, and then open up a lot of space for your team to work with. Ooh. This tends to, and also a part of it is because of the loot. You, you, maybe you only have a couple shacks to loot, and this is the only sniper you get. And here's the footsteps, patiently waiting for it. Does get the shots back over towards teams, but the side of this is open. Nice reposition coming out, but Team Liquid instantly sees that, jumps back over onto it. Going to be three kills now going back over towards Team Liquid as Exodus finding itself in a very dangerous predicament right now. Going to lean in, go for the shots, and instantly dropped off of that as Exodus goes down in 16th place. All right. I just can't talk about anything. Anytime I say <laughs> anything, something <laughs> bad happens to a team. <laughs> you are, How do I cast you are the on rest fire of this? with the caster curse right cast now. You a game just like not a team from here. The magic in your voice matchup. This is a good start for Team Liquid. Will it be the confidence boost they need to kind of propel them to a good situation? Now you have Monkey. He is the star from last game for Exalt. He's going to pick up all that level three gear and the AWM if he so chooses. Navi, 
is making a late rotation. This is another team that I think plays very well on Sanok. We saw this a lot at PGC. I thought they played incredibly well on this map, and I expect them to potentially continue that success here. Circle pops, just a little bit more centered from what we saw. Still has the bay in place, so that split coming up from Exalt. Uh, it's going to be able to put in some work, but the risk comes into it is most teams probably aren't going to push back down towards the south anyway. So really, this is more just a, I would say, an anchor position. You're just trying to make sure that you end up with the circle one way or the other. Towards the north is where it's going to get quite messy. As you can see, Red Canid's coming by onto it, but we do have Tornado Energy making push back down next to WTSG on foot. Navi still inside their vehicle is going to be rolling over there next to Wildcard in just a second, but the south still pretty open with the exception of Exalt and Meta. Yeah, you could see Monkey. He went over to the other side to try to maybe hope that nobody would kind of roll into the position of Exalt, and they're able to cover a lot of circle and then rotate to the area that is most beneficial, depending on where the next circle goes. However, they did hear the vehicles from Meta rolling up to the west, and they're going to opt to try to get back together. Monkey's got to be really careful. Pome should start pulling that trigger. There he goes. Nothing connecting just yet. Ducking and diving monkey. is Monkey. Monkey is making He's got this the moves. so hard. Oh, oh Udyr gets the shots back over to it. And, you know, Paul May wants that one back. So somehow, I was sitting there making a joke about the fact that ghillie suits don't work in water, but apparently they do, is that was just a very sneaky ninja move coming out from them. <laughs> it's crazy. I mean... Excellent job by Monkey. Great reactions here from the other members of Exalt. Pome is all alone. The other two members of Singularity have opted to get out of there, go somewhere else, because he is basically dead to rest. Monkey gets into a boat to push back over there just to make sure that they can flush it out. Uh, Relo is finding himself in a little bit of a fight with Athletico, who's continuing their rotation. Uh, Relo's by himself at this point, but not too terribly afraid. He did get the introductory knock onto this, but the rest of the guys from Oath, not in the best position to provide much support. Really, I feel like they're just trying to stall Athletico and be like, just don't come any further at this point. Yeah, it's definitely a delaying action for the members of Oath, most likely. It's hard to say exactly if Relo maybe got caught in that position by accident, but I kind of doubt it. I assume that's the, the setup that Oath was looking looking for there. Meanwhile, Team Liquid is spanned out in a line across the northern part of the circle. They, a lot of teams, you'll see this on Sandhawk, they'll get these mountains and they'll just kind of line up and just try to brutalize teams who try to come through. So with the circle that we've got set up, since we do have Australians inside here that are watching, I guess we can make the joke that we are in South Quarry right now, as well as West West Quarry is where we're watching a lot of the stuff happen. Because everybody knows Quarry proper is just a part of Quarry, based off of Xenox's viewpoint on how Sanhok works. <laughs> Some, somewhere Xenox is going, it's going to go Quarry no matter what. It's going right to go now. Quarry, man. Just... It's going to go Quarry. I don't know. But uh, Cave is where we see FaZe at, pretty close to the center. I would love to see a Cave finish. Those would get very, very feisty. But IG and OMK both sending a member back down into Quarry, and that is a hazardous choice to make. As you can see, people can kind of line up across the side of Quarry, and it just rains death and destruction to those that are inside of it. Yeah, it's not something you'll see a lot of teams do too often. The idea, I guess, if you're going to go through the quarry is to just no one's going to expect it. Mm -hmm. But generally speaking, it's it's very challenging. There's a couple angles you can kind of work with towards the northern side of quarry to get in and out sort of safely. But for the most part, it's pretty dangerous. Like you said, there's just too many sight lines inside of there. And the cannons are on the eastern half of this circle. We are going all the way over west right. now. This is a brutal shift. So with this, all of our Eastern teams in a lot of trouble, and our Quarry proper teams now are going to have to figure out what they're going to do. Team Liquid already on the move, chasing right back behind WTSG. But we also do have, it's going to be FaZe pushing back over next to Singularity at the same time. This is where it's going to get pretty problematic for a lot of these teams that do actually have that foothold already inside the safe zone. Singularity is trying to hold the line with their two members right now and do get a couple of shots and take down one of the FaZe members. So it gives them a little bit more space to work with as that FaZe push was starting to be very dangerous for them. Yeah, you know what I found fascinating about this when this circle popped is that the Camp Charlie Bridge, nobody is watching it, and all the teams are afraid to go there because you would assume somebody's going to camp it. Oath is trying to use the, the Bay Area to make their rotation through, but Atletico was thinking the same thing. We very rarely see fights down around here. Don't forget Exalt is back over at Camp Charlie like you are talking about, so even if you do manage to get out of this predicament, this is what every team was trying to avoid that's now stuck on the other side of that the bay is they didn't want to know part of any fights and now they're contested and going to be stalled over here 
Athletico got caught with their tail between their legs. The Red Cannon surprised them from the eastern side. They get forced over to here, hoping nobody's there. Too bad, so sad. Oath is there. And then you've got, like you said, Exalt on the other side doing work, spreading out along the eastern edge of Camp Charlie and just doing damage. You can see a lot from that side of Camp Charlie, right? It's just kind of a little bit of a hill that goes down into the river and into the ocean. And you can see so much of the other side that you're just going to be able to put uh -oh. a ton of damage in the teams that try to cross. You can see metagaming is realizing the situation that they're in. They do get down back over towards Wooly, but they are surrounded by two different teams. They have the high ground, so starting to throw out those grenades, trying to roll them back down that hillside, can get some damage off. Got to be very, very cautious as Wildcard just drops down to their bellies, trying to get a little bit more information fed over towards them. But WTSG hears this, starts pushing on the other side of it. VHZ does get taken down. So now just two members up for metagaming as they're pretty pincered off of this spot. Which way are they going to commit to get out of this situation? Yeah, I think WTSG should gain some confidence and just try to bully in here, get ahead of these other teams. You have STK's Purdy Curdy moving towards the center for himself. Omikin has a knock from IG as Vasku trying to return the favor onto o Ostrolovich, and he isn't able to really get it going. Another member for Omikin has been knocked. Vasku's taking a little bit of damage back over to the battle uh, between, it looks like now it's a fourth Fourth team has come through, and that's uh, pretty Curdy. Oh, and you can see Explosion comes through on the boat as Oath finally does try to make a cross through that bay area and does get spotted out. So problems abound still over there. Machen still caught out inside the blue. This is one of those mutually assured destruction points. They couldn't separate out as this blue's coming in. It's going to start doing a ton of damage to them. So T-Bone's just trying to get ahead of this situation that's starting to unravel around him, trying to get away from IG at this point. And Vasku finding himself in a very difficult spot, caught out by all numbers of IG looking back over towards it. But Team Liquid looks like they've decided that they want to take it back over towards FaZe. Now, depending on how this push comes through, you can see one of them is just holding right underneath of that window seal, but it gets spotted out, expecting the play. Team Liquid now up to seven kills. Yeah, this is exactly what Team Liquid needed to get going. Get that rocket fuel inside of them that, we, that we've seen them use to propel themselves to incredible heights. So, going to keep our eyes on Team Liquid, even though they're stuck on the other side of this river. Now, my goodness, Matrim. There is still so much river in this circle. This is just brutal. WTSG doing a nice job here, making me look a little bit silly. As I said, maybe they should try to push that fight between meta and wild card. Nope, they moved off, repositioned, played it safe, and it's paying off their dead center. But Party, that's not where you want to be right now, buddy. You got meta on one side of you, wild card to the north, and WTSG, mean, we have still Navi pushing on a similar path to that. Red Canids also looking like they're going to try to cross back around this area next to Exalt Gaming, and that's not going to work too well. We've already seen one team try to do this move, and they're already out in the lobby. <laughs> it, I mean, it's it's next to impossible for the kids. They just have to win a bunch of duels that even then you can, you know, the Exalt team could just back off and heal up again. Meanwhile, Jeems and Team Liquid looking to put the hurt on to another team. Two members knocked here for IG. Mexi's going to clean that one up. Jeems gets another one. That's five kills for him. One left. Slovak, you're alive, but you're the last one on your squad alive, and this is a Team Liquid that's on the hunt for him right now. Multiple members now starting to approach the shack. You can see defensive grenades being set up by IG, just tossing him out, trying to deny any form of approach. He does have a teammate's crate right in front of him that he can try to get a little bit more grenades with to buy it some more space and time with this, but it looks like it's just a matter of when he's going to go down at this point as Team Liquid desperately wants that. Atletico does get spotted out as Kanid's still just trying to figure out how they're going to make the approach. Grenades start coming in back over in bottom right. You can see that's going to be Team Liquid mopping that one up. Yep, Team Liquid doing a good job. Ostrolovich tried to hold it off as best as he could. He is considered kind of the star player for that IG team, but it's just too much. Team Liquid is so strong on this map. Now we're up to 11 kills for them as they look to fan out over on the eastern side of this river. Will it shift left? It almost certainly has to shift west at this point. Monkey continues to make the cannons pay. They go down. That's two teams that Exalt has completely wiped off the eastern side of that river. Still holding down the offensive line. And just like you say, the shift comes back over towards the west. Still has a little bit of the river in play. And uh, just a touch of the rest of the island back over towards the east and the north. That Team Liquid might opt into playing, but that's a death sentence if you opt into staying there. 
It's going to be Purdy finally getting spotted out, dropping us down to eight teams as Kodak is right up next to Team Liquid and just listening to them murder everything around him and praying that they just don't notice his presence at the time. <laughs> Looks like Team Liquid might opt to go back over there next to the bridge, but up towards the north is where it's starting to have a couple of things pop off as Wildcard looking back over towards Tornado Energy, trying to hold them out. Yeah, Tornado Energy making a late rotation up on the north side of the circle as it shifts away from them. Wildcard doing a great job with what they've been given, holding off, uh, only losing one member in the process. Now I'm curious to see what Exalt is going to do here. Are they just going to camp this bridge? Are they going to try and push up a little bit further? Oh, Jeems, I think you are spotted out. You might be in trouble of getting shot out of this river in just a second. This could be big with this position coming out. The last remaining member of Singularity looking back towards a very weakened Team Liquid. The other two members are trying to crawl back over here and get up next to Exalt, but <laughs> Grenade's going to go out. Jeep's just going to walk right into it, not even aware of what's going on. And Monkey has his number. That is a lot of damage being done. Team Liquid gets eliminated. They had a ton of kills to work with, though, but Kodiak, uh, Kodak trying to do a little bit of work on the other side, but Kodak, where do you go next? As everybody knows where you're at, you've got a rock and you are dead. Definitely not going to be able to cross that river. Yeah, where's Kodak going? Nowhere, Matram. That is pretty much done and dusted for him. He does get a knock, though, on the Kumpot. That is some good work by him to at least get something, potentially. I don't know if he's going to be able to finish it off, but hey, hey, at least you're making something out of a bad situation. Go down swinging is the easiest way to see it. So Kumpot does manage to get rezzed there, but it's a matter of what we see going on towards the center of the circle as WTSG holding down a strong position and Exalt starting to get on a roll at this point, moving into the end game yet again. Yeah, I mean, this is three games in a row that we're seeing Exalt in a top five situation, playing incredibly well. Navi's back in this again. Wild card, hey, they're back. And finally, WTSG having some success. This is another team that I think could be really powerful on this map just because of the sheer fragging power available on this Welcome to South George team. That is what can really propel you to heights on Sandhawk. Tornado Energy is trying to make their cross back over towards the save zone, but Wild Card's just gatekeeping them out. Still a little hesitant to push back over here because remember they had one of their members get down just a second ago off that sneaky angle from Singularity, so a little bit more hesitant to make the push back over this direction, but it's going to be the shots from Wild Card that force it out. Meanwhile, most of the other teams are kind of holding the positions that they're at because they're filled like in a good spot. It's Exalt that's starting to spread out just a little bit more and get more control over their area of the circle. Yeah, they're really favoring kind of more of these 3-1 splits. You often are going to see Nailup out there on his own, while the other three members doing their thing and doing it darn well today. It's kickstart and sharp shot, the last two left for wildcard. Only one kill, but hey, top five finish on Sandhawk. Not too shabby. Next circle is definitely... Not too bad, of course, at this point. It has to move away from water. Mm. So nobody's really going to be super out of it except for Tornado Energy. They're in a bit of a trouble as they're trying to make their way along the coast, see if they can sneak in on the backside of WTSG. The shots now starting to come out between these teams might give them the opportunity to sneak back over next to WTSG like you were talking about. Navi is still just very hesitant to move forward, and that's just what happens on Sandhawk. There's so many rocks, trees, it is just terrifying to move forward in these late games because you assume that there's somebody behind everything and it really stalls your like the way you push and move through this part of the map. Unless you're Exalt, who just continues to move around Rome, they have control over their area, and they're kind of like just trying to hunt down anybody that might be moving around them so that way they can make a commit. You can tell that that's what they're aiming for right now. they just like, we just want to see one team so that way we can go after them. Yeah, their movement is really effective, especially because if a member of their team, we've seen this so far, gets knocked, they're able to get to them safely and get them back up more often than not. And that's a really important underrated skill in competitive PUBG is your ability to get your teammates back alive if they get knocked. Because knocks are just going to happen. It's making the right moves, being in the right positions. TE did manage to sneak over back next to WTSG. You can see the grenade comes through. That's from two downs back over towards WTSG as Exalt does get a sight line back over towards Navi, and they're about to start exchanging grenades as well. Damage was done to WTSG, but look at these grenades landing right on top of Shiv. Somehow, nearly, I thought for certain that they were just going to stack right on top of each other and instantly kill him, but that's going to stop Bush coming out from Exalt for just one second. Yeah, Navi is backing off just a little bit. Senya up on the front for Navi as Tab and Kemba start making their move. 
Ooh, Ooh. here. Ooh, Senya's actually going to find VAR. WTSG getting torn apart. Tornado Energy started it. Now the other teams are finishing it. It is just Zhang once again. That is Safety. He has changed his name. He is now Zhang. Let's just get that out of the way. But he is going to go down as we have three teams left. Navi going to go ahead and use the position that they can hear. Exalt taking the shots whenever they eliminate WTSG. Now going to start throwing the grenades back over to them. Exalt's trying to creep back down this hillside. That's going to bounce a little bit too far out. Now it's starting to get a little bit closer. Don't forget, we still have wild card. That's a part of this fight, just on a different angle, looking over the backsides right now of Exalt, but just don't have clear sight lines to work with. Navi is still just trying to make the plays off of this, but another member goes down. Exalt now sitting on 12 kills, and there's potential for more as they're making the push right up next to Navi, but that's another member down. Just one person up from Navi, and the grenades are going to take it out. So now wild card looking back over towards the remnants of Exalt. Only going to be Udyr trying to get the shots over to it. Dow turns this back into oh, a 1v1 no. one one oh, situation. No. And yeah, it's not the way you want to be doing oh. things there. But you can see Udyr's like, I'll take that point. And now was... running back over for the res. Oh. Wildcard has four kills, but this is going to be problematic. If they manage to get this res off, it's now moving it back into a 2v1. And I don't think that Kickstart is aware of what's going on or where the reposition came out from Exalt. I was just about to compliment Wildcard on their great timing on these pushes. Great great grenades, but the unfortunate situation where they accidentally spray down the teammate. Not exactly sure what happened there. Love to see the replay from that later, as now it is a 2v1. The res is going to come through. Monkey is coming up. Udyr leading the way for them as well. So kickstart. I mean, we've seen him do nutty stuff to exalt in game number one. Can he recreate it here, Batrum? They see each other now. It's going to be Monkey going down. Tries to get the shots back over, but exalt. Finally tired of making it into the end game and not getting around victory. Going to take away a massive win with 15 kills. We talked about they keep popping up in the end game with a lot of kills. Well, this is starting to be a chase after Exalt, it feels like. Well, they are playing extremely well. Finally, they're able to get to the win after yep. getting into those late game situations. This is a scary, scary team. Bit of a miscue there from Wildcard. I thought they were going to take it. I was getting ready to go nuts and be like, wow, they win this. You know, They had the 2v1 two two and then uh. shifted into the 1v1 and I was like, w w uh, but good awareness on Exalt to pay attention. They saw the kill feed. It was like, hey, they knocked each other and they just run up and they're like, I'll take that kill point and then I'm going to go back and get the res. That's like one of those moments that kind of stops you in your tracks if you're Wildcard because you're like, okay, we have to figure out what just went wrong there. And then while you're trying to recoil off of that, the res isn't going through, you're now outnumbered and you've lost all information on what's happening around you. Yeah, let's give some credit to Navi, another top five finish for them on a map that they typically perform very well on. Both of those teams, Wildcard and Navi, great Sandhawk teams. And then we got to talk about the Team Liquid performance. They get a fifth Excuse me, not a fifth place. That's Tornado Energy. Team Liquid had 11 kills. I remember that. They played incredibly well. <laughs> you can see there's some talking going on here between the teams. And excellent, excellent job by Wildcard. And like we talked about early on, their drop location gives them a lot of flexibility to get into these late game situations. Uh, especially on Sandhawk. Whenever you, that's the, the name of the game on that is react to what's happening around you. But the amount of information you have to pass from teammate to teammate, so that way you know what's going on, especially on these hillside fights that we're seeing be very common today so far, making sure that you can say, okay, they're at this point, use utility here, throw frag grenades here, I'm gonna flank around off of this position. And you still have to do that with multiple teams on top of that, so that way you can make sure that these rotations and these late game fights are going to be clean. And we're starting to see just continued excellence come out from Exult in these situations. Yeah, man, this is, this is some really good PUBG that they're playing very patient, very disciplined. That's exactly what you need. Not the game that FaZe wanted there. A little bit of a struggle for them. They had a pretty good game number two with a lot of kills, mm -hmm. but so far they haven't been able to get into those late game situations. Now, to be fair, the circles have been pretty brutal so far today. They have been hard shifting away from stuff. That last game, we had a river in the middle of it for almost five or six phases. Yeah. That makes things really difficult on Sandhawk because if you're on the wrong side of the river, we saw this with Team Liquid, despite them playing incredibly well, sometimes there's just not a lot of you, you can do. Well, you've heard us talking about the game, but we have an interview set and ready to go so that way you can listen in what's going on with Shiv down in the game. Well, oh, what is up, guys? Kat Conti down here on the floor with Shift of Exult Gaming. Now, what an incredible game on Sanok. Talk me through the rotations on that map because it is a circle we hardly ever get to see, and it was on the south. How did you guys rotate for um, that circle? Firstly, we decided to leave Singularity taking Camp Charlie, where we usually loot. Uh, and we ended up taking it back in the late game, like mid to late game, uh, because they went more east. So that was 
can kind of an easy game if you talk about rotation. Uh, and then we had a decent circle for the like phase four to phase five. So that that was a good game. Now, one thing I would love to talk about in that two v two situation is wildcard gaming taking out one of their own players. How did that feel for you guys, especially having to get that res on one of your teammates? I mean, you can't expect uh, more than that, you know? Like, it's 1v2 and then it's 1v1, and we have time to revive Monkey, and then we pre pretty much know that we're gonna win the game because 2v1 is, on that situation, is, like, easy, you know? Well, congratulations on that match three victory. We're gonna take it to a short break, followed by the mid, sh wait, what was it? Sorry, the, the mid, the halftime show. Got it, thank you. Coming up on GLL PUBG Season 4, a disappointed father. Just don't disappoint me, son. Just watch PUBG compete as well. Competitive ELO and ranking system. Climb the ladder. Start your path to pro. Head over to pay.gll.gg. The best PUBG platform.